how you had time to do a summary chain, but you did it before. I didn't. Well, <laughs> we had it yesterday, I noticed. Well, yes, we did. Uh, uh, all I did today, in response to some of the requests for information, I believe you got uh, from uh, the associations of substance abuse programs, and uh, you got a, um, a single sheet that gives you the scientific um, sources for some of the uh, data that was provided to you yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know that you got an email this morning with um, a number of the studies that are taken in it. The studies amounted to, I think, over 100 pages when you put them together. So Suzanne has not printed them for you, but we do have them electronically. Yeah. Um, and then you had asked a number of questions, and um, I don't. I don't have complete answers to those questions today, but I have some material that would be the starting point or for some of you may be adequate. So I just showed you what you have on the green sheets. Page one is just sort of an index, I mean the cover page. Page one is um, from Title 21 the United States Code, the Controlled Substances Act, and um, it is the law on the federal denial of federal benefits for drug trafficking and drug possession. I will not um, interpret this for you, uh, uh, but um, it does um, contain information on some of the exclusions from benefits that could apply. I did notice when I was looking at it that um, in the drug trafficking for first and second offenses and in the um, and in the uh, drug possession for the uh, for the first offense and perhaps for the second and more those are at the discretion of the court and I also noticed that at the bottom in the definition of federal benefit, Veterans benefits and public housing work are excluded from the definition of federal benefits. So I guess what I would say is reading the actual law here, we have probably have more questions than it probably presents more questions than it answers. Um, and uh, it, we would have to have an expert here to help us with those. Okay. Uh, on page three. Uh, I think Representative Garrett should have questions about the employers. And on page three is the Medical Use of Marijuana Act and in section 2426, subsection two, it specifically says this chapter may not be construed to require an employer to accommodate the ingestion of marijuana in any workplace or any employee working while under the of marijuana. Uh, and then on page five is the um, Title 22, Section 2383 on possession of marijuana. This is the place in the law that um, sort of as a carve out um, makes possession of up to two and a half ounces a civil violation. Um, a civil violation is not a crime under May law, and you are not convicted of a civil violation. So that make, raises the question of whether in the federal law that we were just looking at, that talks about convictions, uh, and, um, and this, in, in, in Maine, this is considered to be a civil violation, it is not a conviction. Um, but once again, I can give you the distinctive, I mean, the, the definitive answer on what the federal law would, how it would read, because I, I don't know how they interpret it. Uh, on page six and uh, page seven, is, uh, this, we've actually spent a lot of time on section 1107A of Title 17A, and this is on page seven, you'll see where 
the Schedule Z drug possession of marijuana uh, is a Class E crime for between two over two and a half ounces to eight ounces, and then it goes up from there depending on the quantity possessed. Then uh, the rest of it is um, employment law, and this is Title 26, um, which controls employers' use of drug tests, and this really is applicable to um, employment uh, and employers' uh, actions when an employee uh, tests positive for drugs or refuses to take a drug test. There are um, specific requirements in the law for uh, the employer to have a policy that is approved by the Department of Labor. So it is, some, it is complicated. Uh, and uh, the people that I spoke to in the office felt that there is not a difference. There is a difference between a person who is being interviewed to be an employee and an employee. But there was a feeling that there is not a difference between legal and illegal drugs in terms of what the employer can do. But there is a big difference between testing positive and coming to work under the influence of a drug. So, that's the application. Representative Powell? Was that a difference uh, um, if, they, if it were made legal, there was a difference in being under the influence or coming to work under the influence? I, um, I think there's a... You said there was a difference between those two? There's a difference between testing positive yeah. um, and being under the influence. influence. If it were legal, there would be a difference. I am... Uh, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer that question, <laughs> but I, I, uh, I don't know. Representative Joy. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, I was <coughs> wondering why we had scheduled it the day after uh, the hearing uh, for a work session. I know we want to get our work done and everything. And uh, we have two bills that mimic each other. I suppose they could both be considered together. Um, but our analyst has brought up some good points here, uh, especially some of them uh, where um, she uh, cannot help us uh, and also indicated that we need more information on some of the others. I, I hate to say this, but I, I would like to table uh, both of these bills until we can get this particular information that was just covered for us, as well as try to contact the proper individual that can answer those questions for us. Because I, I really, and I want to make a decision on this, but I really can't make a decision today. This is way, way too soon, especially what was just presented to us. And I feel bad for the analyst uh, uh, having to rush through this as she did, uh, because uh, all the work that has been presented to us uh, in the past and currently has always been excellent. And, and I just feel that She's being rushed at this time to bring this information forward. So I, I, I would make a motion that we take it. I heard a rumor about an hour ago that this was going to happen even before this information was brought up. And I feel like we heard hours and hours of testimony. And I don't think that this would make a difference. But Representative Powell. So in, in my feeling on having a work session today, it, it was more to have our, our questions brought forward so that the analysts could um, have time to get information for next week's work session. It was more for us to put out there um, what we might need for information moving forward and looking at the questions and just kind of while it's still
still very fresh to us to put that information out and have time versus waiting until next week and then putting the questions out and then waiting again. So it wasn't, I had, um, in scheduling a work session the next day, I had no intense thinking that we were going to be prepared to vote on something today. Um, I really think we do need time to digest some information, some of us, and, and most of us maybe, um, especially the new members, my being one of them on the committee, and, and to hash through some questions that we may have as a group that we want information on <coughs> next week um, when we come back for another work session. So that was my thought. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I totally agree. I cannot support a tabling motion because I really want to work in these bills. I have lots of questions um, and still digesting a lot of what we heard yesterday. So today's the day for questions. Do you have questions you want to bring up? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll repeat that I will not support a tabling motion today. I My plan was to gather information. I have questions. and. I was hoping we would work these bills traditionally. Representative Davitt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm still working my way through the whole bill line by line. It takes a while to uh, try and do some comparisons. Uh, I did get an email this morning. Uh, you probably remember the committee did it, getting a call to the Senate. Made a comment that bill is, these bills are extremely important. They have to rush into a work session. They have public hearing without you know, trying to rush it to a conclusion. <coughs> it's, uh, it raises the probability that whatever we do is going to be fraught with error. I want to avoid that. I agree with uh, Representative Warren that perhaps we can ask some questions. Get some answers and then uh, table for the farm and have a good session next week. I don't mind I don't mind working it or anything, but I'm just saying that I'm not ready to vote on this today and I'm not about to vote on it today. Um, so I guess that's where I'm at. Um, we also have to find the proper individuals or divisions that can answer some of these questions for us, which may not be today. So at the end, we may end up following through with what I suggested. But I don't mind working it. I don't mind asking the questions and everything. You know, I, I think that's a good direction to go in. on how the federal government interprets 
the question of what's a conviction under state law. Um, so I can't tell you. I, I know that in Maine we do not consider an adjudication for civil violation of possession of up to two and a half ounces of marijuana. We do not consider that to be a conviction. That is an adjudication. I don't know how the feds view that. And that really was the question. So I'd be happy to try to get that for you next week. Other than that, I would refer you to the buff colored um, uh, chart that I did that um, just taking you through it as an overview, I would say, let's come back to the front page. Um, below the front page are a more traditional bill analysis of 1401 and 1380 um, divided into sections that, that um, talk about taxation, cannabis or marijuana possession, uh, regulation, the state agency, various protections, uh, food preparation, uh, concealed weapons permit, and, uh, and the, uh, the youth prevention uh, fund. Um, those that both mills cover pretty much all those same categories. So there's, there's a sort of a short version of the mills in, inside under the brown cover. And then on the cover sheet is an even shorter version that shows you the differences in the proposed taxation, the differences in the proposals on possession, on licensure and adjudication, and then a listing of some of the other um, provisions from the bill, uh, notably um, that LD 1380 doesn't take effect until it is approved by the voters and the referendum in November 2016. That referendum provision is not in LD 1401. Um, so I'd be happy to take you through the details of some of those tax, possession, licensure, regulation provisions if you would like. Um, and I'd be happy to note down any um, requests for information that you have for next week and, and try to get people here. Any questions at this point? somebody from the Attorney General's office on the, um, on the question of um, the effect of a federal conviction on benefits, but I might, I might have to go to somebody from the U.S. Attorney's office from that. I don't know. It's fairly unusual for them to come to Augusta, so I would be happy to try to get you whatever help I can get.
how the process of these bills will guide what the referendum process is going to look like. So here's what we know in the state. What we know in the state is that these questions are coming on the ballot. So how can we do some work here to help guide those questions? And I heard some reference to that yesterday. So I don't know if somebody's here that can answer that question, maybe Dan Walker or, or someone else, but I really want to get a sense of um, how does the work that we do here together um, advise what we know is going to be on the ballot? How can we use our collective work to guide that process? Well, well um, LD1380, um, if you pass that bill, um, as one, one of the provisions of that bill is that it does not take effect until it is approved by the voters in November 2016. So if you, in the traditional manner, pass um, 1380, it will go out to the voters in November 2016. Um, I understand that there is, I think there is one uh, initiated bill that has been approved through the Secretary of State's office that is, I believe, is out for signature. Yes. Um, I don't know whether the other one has been approved yet by the Secretary of State's office. For that or not, yes. Okay. But neither one of those is has been passed by the voters, so you don't know don't know uh, you, so my question would be or, or uh, just a follow up thank you madam chair again i would like to hear from somebody about how this process would affect the questions that are very likely to be on the upcoming ballot thank you representative russell 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 Russell. Thank you, Representative Diane Russell, um, sponsor of the bill. Um, so, having been through numerous citizens initiatives and being in the process of two right now, let me walk you through this. So, per the Constitution, if, the, if there is a ballot referendum that has been approved and certified by the Secretary of State, meaning that they have gotten their signatures, at that time, which will probably be certifications, usually the deadline to turn in the ballot initiative signatures is usually January of one year. And then by somewhere in the middle of uh, mid to late February, uh, the Secretary of State will come back and certify whether or not those uh, petitions, if that petition has uh, gotten enough signatures to qualify, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 61,500. So if at that time next year, when one, if not two, of the ballot initiatives um, come before you, you will only be able to vote on those initiatives up or down. The third option is to do a competing measure. Now the question is, are you going to do a competing measure on the first ballot initiative? Are you going to do a competing measure on the second ballot initiative? Or does it, by the main constitution, require that ballot, the, whatever competing measure you do, to be put on both of those uh, initiatives? So there will be two initiatives on the ballot. Do you support legalizing marijuana? Do you support legalizing marijuana if both of them get there? Now they both have um, two very different approaches to legalizing marijuana, at which point if they both pass in uh, November 16, we're going to be right back here again in um, January 2017, and you're going to have to determine what the voter intent was. So we're going to be in a bigger mess later on. Now if you pass a piece of legislation now, the Marijuana Policy Project has agreed to not be collecting signatures. I can't speak to legalized Maine. Um, and we will put that ballot, you know, the question is up to this committee whether you want to put it on at 15 or 16. I personally think 16. There's some folks that would like it done sooner. Um, but irrespective, this is the last chance that you have to be able to do something and to guide that process, like you said. So the bills have been written already for and presented to the Secretary of State. There's no changing those initiatives now. Um, but these bills that are before you, this one and 1401, are in your hands to shape. 
And like I said, you know, you can go through the differences of the bills, but as you can see here, they're very similar. So if you were to merge them into one, you would actually be able to then put that question to the people the way that you'd like that question asked. So does that provide a, a more thorough answer for you, Representative <coughs> Warren? Thank you. But you could end up with three on the ballot if you set a 1380 to the, if you pass 1380, it goes to the ballot also. Well, if you pass 1380 today, and then the other two initiatives choose to continue to collect signatures, there is very much a, still a question, I guess, as to whether or not um, those were considered competing measures. I think that's a question for sec the Secretary of State. Um, and if there are competing measures, then they would potentially compete with both initiatives. So you'll have both initiatives on the ballot, then you have a competing measure that competes with both of them. So it'll be question A, B, or C, yes, no, or none of the above. Um, the, or no, you want, I prefer this option, I prefer this option, and then none of the above. But, um, as I said before, for certain, the Marijuana Policy Project has agreed not to collect signatures, so it would be in that position. I can't speak to the me. Um, is there any background on in the legislative body that we be working on something that is also being petitioned outside the, the house. Is that, it's is only, that a conflict also or a competing measure that we as legislature legislature to be concerned about? And that, that comes down to, um, so you can work on it now and pass it because neither of those initiatives have collected their signatures or been certified. The question is, a secretary of state question, and I don't know the answer to this one, which is what happens next year if one of those initiatives does collect signatures and get on the ballot. Um, and I don't have an answer for you on that one. But yes, you can do what you're doing now because the, the initiatives have not been certified as complete. There are countless initiatives that